there are two separate issues that are not mutually exclusive, but they're separate issues um, in terms of how we deal with them and, and where are the, the sort of the choke points for these, um, these issues. One is, uh, that, that, that came up this week, one is, the, um, is gun control. And we made the point that this is not a Donald Trump phenomena. This is a Republican phenomena. The, the inability for this country, regardless of how many six-year-olds are killed, how many country uh, Western uh, music fans are killed, how many um, uh, Latinos are killed at a shopping mall, how many uh, revelers going out to a, a club are killed in, in Florida or in Ohio or people in a uh, movie theater, the, and how many people die uh, by their own hand in committing suicide. These are all problems that can be laid on the right at the doorstep of uh, Mitch McConnell, frankly, in the Republican Party, and we will never be able to deal with it until they do not have the ability to stop this legislation, which means that they cannot hold one of the two houses of Congress nor the presidency. The second issue is, of course, the white supremacy. And um, you wrote about that um, quite a bit uh, in your second piece at Salon uh, this week. Let's talk about that and how it plays into um, this culture of grievance. Well, I think I, I mean, I think the, the one thing, the one point I wanted to make about all this is that I think that there I'm hopeful, uh, maybe not hopeful is not the right word, but I feel like there may be a chance this confluence of white supremacist um, ideology, terrorism. Uh, and the, and the gun issue, uh, all kind of you know, surrounding Trump and the Republicans, it it may end up you know maybe that will bring this to a head. I mean maybe I'm just being naive here, but it seems to me like there's something ha- that happens when you see that that it, it become explicitly political as it was in El Paso, as it was with the Tree of Life synagogue in Christchurch in New Zealand, and you're seeing this sort of uh, ideology sort of coalesce around going in and, and shooting people. I mean, their terrorist, they, they, their method of terrorism is to use these, you know, these automatic or semi-automatic weapons to kill mass numbers of people. And it, it strikes me, and I, I thought maybe that this would be a moment when you would see um, maybe some kind of, of recognition among the American people that, that something has actually shifted in a way that is, is even more dangerous than it was before, and it was already horrifying. The body count is is absolutely horrifying. And to that extent, I think that Donald Trump, he is certainly encouraging, enabling uh, white supremacy, but there's also something about his personality in general, which I think we can apply to this idea of grievance and vengeance. I mean, that is what he ran on. He ran on the idea that it's a violent world, and the only way that we can... Um, that, that we can survive it is to be violent in return. I mean, he said this over and over again, that he believes in an eye for an eye. He believes in getting even. This is his operating philosophy. And when you look at the profile, the, the personality um, profile of these mass shooters, they're very... They're, uh, 99.9% of them are men. Uh, most of them are white. And uh, most of them have this exact same, uh, you know, sort of operating philosophy. They are entitled. They feel that they've been unfairly treated, and they are out to get revenge. I mean, that is Donald Trump, and I think we have to start, you know, I'm not going to talk about toxic masculinity. I'm no, I'm no expert in that particular thing, but I will say this. If such a thing exists, we have a president who, who is an avatar of that particular um, issue, and from the misogyny to the racism to the sense of entitlement to the to the sense of grievance, and to the answer for that always being vengeance. You must. He calls himself a quote counter puncher, and he does it to every single. He never lets a criticism go by. 
uh, without without reacting. And I'm not saying that he's been physically violent. We, he hasn't been. But it's, you know, it's disconcerting to think of the most powerful man on earth having the same kind of personality profile as many of these people who feel they need to act out violently. I mean, this man has a tremendous amount of... Uh, Power. I, I, I closed my piece in Salon this past week in talking about this with, you know, a deep concern that uh, Trump will decide he needs to get even with somebody, and he has the power to do it in ways that we don't even want to think about. Yeah, I mean, it, there, it's it's disturbing on both ends of this, right? It's, it's disturbing on the uh, Trump end. It's disturbing on the uh, general population end. I mean, I, yeah. I, 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 frankly. I think largely what you are um, describing, this sense of grievance, the sense of entitlement, um, is really at the core of a conservative worldview. And um, it's it just feels like more and more of the Republican Party is getting uh, closer and closer to that core and uh, that it does not bode well. Uh, for the country, um, at least in the short and midterm, hopefully it's uh, okay in the long term, uh, where it looks a little bit less um, um, rosy for the Republicans. But one can only hope. Uh, we got to take a break. Let's uh, continue uh, this conversation and talk more uh, in the next hour. Digby, we'll see you then. In the meantime, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Ring of Fire Radio.